Hey guys, what's what's happening? I'm back with a video to do this video to you guys. What am I doing? I'm stupid. Anyway, today I'm gonna talk about stuff like I usually do. I usually talk about stuff, but the specific stuff I'm gonna talk about today is Christianity and specifically what I believe in Christianity. If you have no idea what Christianity is and all that jazz, you know, then hopefully this will be a good introduction for you as to what we believe, you know. If you're already a Christian, you know, watch this anyway. There are many Christians in the world, but of these many Christians, there are many subcategories of Christians, you could say, called denominations. Denominations mainly disagree on you know, the the details of specifically what the Bible says. Stuff where that's kind of left up to interpretation, you know? So, if you're a different denomination, you know, go, go ahead and watch this and find out what I believe. Because why not, right? Am I right? Yeah, okay. Here we go. I believe in one God. This one God has revealed himself to us in three different ways, three different persons. There is the Father, the Son, also known as the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Three separate and distinct persons, but still one God. Not three gods, one God. And the Father is not a third of God, the Son is not a third of God, and the Holy Spirit is not a third of God. They are both all fully God, but only one God. So one triune God. Three separate people, but still one God. Yeah, this one triune God has existed forever, since before time existed. He created time, of course. So, one day, I don't want to say one day, because it was before days existed, one... At one time, at one point, God was like, hey, I want to make things. I want to I wanna make everything. So, God said, let there be, and there was. God created everything. So, you know, then there was everything. There was earth, there was the suns, moon, stars, everything. Everything on earth. And so, Adam and Eve, the first two humans, were in the, lived in the Garden of Eden, this perfect garden. All of creation was perfect. It had not been infected by sin yet. So Adam and Eve didn't have to work for food, or they didn't have any pain or anything. They were naked. They didn't wear clothes because they didn't realize they were naked. They didn't realize there was anything wrong with that. And because there wasn't anything wrong with that, there was no sin. They weren't ashamed of their bodies. And God gave Adam and Eve one rule. He said, all right, you see that tree over there? That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You may not eat the fruit from that tree. You may not even touch it. If you do, you will die. Now, God didn't make this rule because he really liked that fruit and he wanted it all for himself. No, he made this rule to give Adam and Eve free will. He gave them free will because he wanted to give them the choice to love him. He wanted Adam and Eve to want to love him. He didn't want to force them to love him. If he, if he didn't give them the choice to love him, it would kind of just be like puppets, you know? They would be his puppets. You know? Now, sometime in between nothingness and everythingness, there was this one angel. He was, he's called Lucifer. And he was like, hey, uh, God, you're doing a good job, uh, you know? Everything's everything's going pretty alright, but uh, you know I think I could do a better job, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here to hell and you know try you know on my own you know doing all this crap. I'm gonna try to you know I'm gonna try to you know kill you and all that jazz. I want to be more powerful than you, so you know we're gonna be enemies now, you know. So adios, Lucifer, also known as Satan or the Devil, then went to Adam and Eve and was like, hey. Did God really say, you can't eat any of the fruit in the garden? And then Eve's like, no, nah. he just said, you know, we can't eat that specific fruit. And Satan's like, oh, you know, I, he, he didn't really mean that. He just doesn't want you to eat it, because if you eat it, you'll be like God. And so Adam and Eve are like, oh, why not be like God then? And so Adam and Eve ate this fruit, and they looked at themselves and they were like, oh, we're naked. Oh, we know the difference between good and evil now. Oh, we're not like God. Satan lied to them, so now they were sinful because they broke God's one rule. And God said to them, all right, guys, 
guys. You messed up. But that's okay. You two and all of your descendants will be cursed, alright? Uh, the Earth and all of creation is cursed now because you messed up. But that's okay, because someday I'm gonna send a savior. He is going to, you know, he's going to fix the curse and everything will be alright, alright? So, you know, you will still die because you messed up, but, you know, it's alright. A savior will come eventually. So, fast forward a while, you know, the Earth is pretty well populated, you know? And there's this one group of people called the Israelites, alright? Now, the Israelites are God's chosen people. God has said, you know, from this group of people, my Savior will come. Eventually, one of your descendants will be the Savior that I have prophesied. But the problem is, the Israelites are slaves to the Egyptians. And so the Egyptians are, you know, beating on the Israelites, saying, do my bidding, and, you know, doing whatever slave owners do. And, you know, the Israelites are just generally treated like crap. So God finds this dude named Moses, and he's like, alright, Moses, so I want you to go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is like the Egyptian king. I want you to go to Pharaoh and be like, hey, let my people go. And Moses, he's, he's hesitant, you know, but he goes anyway, because God told him to. And so, he goes to Pharaoh, and he's like, hey, let the Israelites go, you know, free them. And the Pharaoh's like, ha, 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 oh, ha, 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 you're funny. Uh, I'm gonna not do that, but, uh, you know, thanks for the offer. Uh, and so, Moses, you know, he goes to God, and he's like, okay, what do I do? And God's like, alright, you're gonna go back to Moses. And you're gonna tell him, you know, if you don't set us free, all these th th plagues are gonna happen, these bad things are gonna happen, right? And so he goes back to Pharaoh, Pharaoh still says no. So, since Pharaoh denied freedom for all the Israelites, God sends all these plagues. And so, after all these, you know, huge long plagues, God's like, alright, this is the final and worst plague of all, alright? I'm gonna send my angel of death over Egypt. And he's going to kill all of the firstborn children. But, if you don't want your firstborn to die, you know, he said to the Israelites, if you don't want your firstborn to die, find a perfect unblemished lamb and slaughter it and take its blood and paint it over your doorframe, all right? The angel of death will see this and he will pass over your house and not kill your firstborn. And so that happens and Pharaoh's like, oh crap. This guy's, like, legit. And so, you know, he sets all the Israelites free. He later changes his mind. A bunch of other crap happens, you know. But then, you know, the Israelites eventually get free. Other stuff happens. It's a cool book. Read the book. Uh, yeah, read the Bible. It's, it's, it's cool. So a bunch of other cool stuff happens. Not important for the purposes of this video. But, you know. Fast forward. Lots of many super lots of years, and then this guy Jesus is born. Now Jesus, remember at the beginning of the video, I was like, you know, the, the Father, Son slash Word and Holy Spirit, you know. So this is the Word. The Word became flesh. The Word, or also known as the Son, became human flesh. He became a human. That human is Jesus. Now, Jesus, I believe that Jesus was both 100% human and 100% God. Not 50% human, 50% God. Not, you know, God in human form. Not a human that was, you know, doing God's bidding for him. No, he was both 100% human and 100% God. And so Jesus, throughout his entire life, lived a perfect life. Because he's God, he can live a perfect life. We can live perfect lives because we're humans, but you know. So Jesus lived a perfect life. And then he was killed. We killed him. In his death, our sins were cast upon him. And this perfect man w died with our sins upon him. Since this perfect man died, he is our sacrificial lamb. You know, we call him the sacrificial lamb just like the pa in the Passover, you know, when they killed a, an unblemished lamb to save them, you know. Jesus was our unblemished lamb. He was sinless, and yet he died. He So because he was sinless and died, he took our punishment for us. If it was anyone else, if it was any sinful man, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have counted. But since he was sinless, it worked. So we had our sins forgiven for us forever. 
And so Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. He came back from the dead, and he came to he went to his his followers, his believers, and was like, "Hey guys, so uh, you know, I I was I was here. I was doing all these cool things, all these miracles in front of you guys, and including you know raising myself from the dead. And uh, so now I'm gonna go back to heaven, but while I'm gone, you know." The Holy Spirit is going to come, one of the three persons of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit's going to come, and he's going to give you this power. He's going to give you the power to go out to the world and tell everybody about me. So Jesus went up to heaven, and with the Father and Holy Spirit, reigns over all of creation. The Holy Spirit then later came to Jesus' followers and, you know, gave them the power to tell everybody about Jesus. And so that's what they did. They went out and told people. Now, when you die, you as you, when I die, when any everybody dies, you will either go to heaven or to hell. Heaven is eternal awesomeness, and hell is eternal punishment. Now, how do you get to heaven, you ask? I'm glad you asked. You don't do anything. I don't do anything? Then why doesn't everybody go to heaven? Well, thank you for asking. What you gotta do is you have to believe. Now, this isn't you believing. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit you believing. So you're not doing anything. It is God giving you the power to believe. You're not doing this on your own. It's God giving you the ability to do this. So you don't have to do anything to get to heaven. Just believe by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, because you don't have to do anything to get to heaven, you don't have to doubt whether or not you're going to heaven. As long as you do, by the power of the Holy Spirit, believe, you can be sure that you are going to heaven. You don't have to question yourself. You can say, without a doubt, I am going to heaven. Now, someday, Jesus will come back to earth in all of his glory, and everyone that ever has lived and ever will live will proclaim that Jesus Christ is God. God will then take all of his believers ever up into heaven, all of the non-believers into hell, and... Jesus will defeat Satan once and for all. Satan will have no power over anything anymore. And everything will be alright. God will recreate creation. He will destroy this heaven and earth. And recreate er heaven and earth. This earth will be perfect and unblemished. There will be no sin there whatsoever. Now, into some of the doctrinal stuff. The specifics where some people disagree on stuff. I do not believe in the rapture. The rapture is the thinking that someday God will take all of his believers up into heaven and leave everybody else down here to give them a second chance uh, to follow him. They will have seven years here down on earth to start to follow Christ. During these seven years, Satan will have full control over everything on earth. Then after the seven years, Jesus will come back, everyone will proclaim, blah blah blah. I do not believe in this. I believe that this seven years of the devil's reign that the Bible speaks of is a metaphorical seven years. So it is not literally seven years, it is just, you know, a metaphor. I believe that this seven years, seven years, is going on right now. Satan has reign over the earth. Now, at the same time, God also has reign over all of earth. The, Satan and Jesus are uh, battling it out, you know? However, Jesus on the cross did defeat Satan once and for all. Satan still hasn't given up yet. Think of it like this. Satan and Jesus are playing a best two out of three match of rock, paper, scissors. Jesus won the first two matches. But Satan wants to play the third anyway, because Satan, he's desperate to win, you know? He wants to win once and for all. But when Jesus finally does come again and defeat Satan once and for all, that will be Jesus finally winning the third match of Rock, Paper, Scissors. And so Satan will have finally lost once and for all. He will have no control over anything. The end. Now, although we are saved by grace, we do not have to do anything that does not mean that we shouldn't do good works and stuff. We should still lead, lead godly lives to the best of our ability, which isn't really us of our own power leading godly lives. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit we lead godly lives. So, we should still do good works and be nice people, you know? Why do we do this, you ask? Well, thank you for asking. We do this because Christians are witnesses to the world. So people will see you and be like, hey, 
you are like always happy and nice to everybody. Why? And you'll be like, hey, well, Jesus said, you know, to be nice to people, so I'm doing that. And then the person that asked will be like, oh, that's cool. Who's this Jesus dude you talk about? And then you can tell them about Christianity and all that jazz, and that'll happen. So, still do good works and be nice people and all that jazz, but, you know, it's not like you're gonna go to hell if you don't, but you really should. You know, like, it's... You, you need to. Now, into super confusing stuff here. So, before Jesus died, on his, his last meal, he was talking to his 12 disciples, his closest friends, and he took the bread and said, This is my body. Eat this for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus then also took a cup of wine and said, this is my blood. Drink this for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, most people believe that Jesus was speaking metaphorically about the bread and wine, saying, you know, this just really represents my body and blood. I do not believe that. I believe that the bread and wine, when you eat it, are actually Jesus' body and blood. Now, if you look at it with a microscope, you won't see human flesh and human blood. It'll still be bread and wine. However, now I'm going to use a big fancy Greek word right here, koinonia. Koinonia basically means in harmony with. So I believe that the bread and wine is in koinonia with Jesus' body and blood. The bread and wine is in harmony with Jesus' body and blood. So the bread and wine does not stop being bread and wine, but it does also become body and blood. It is both bread and Jesus' flesh. It is both wine and Jesus' blood. I know, it's confusing. I have a pretty good analogy for this, I'm not going to use it right now, it's a long analogy. So if, you know, people are interested enough in this, you know, comment down below. I might, I might give it in another video if you're interested, if not, you know, I don't need to, it's not that important. I mean, communion is important, but the analogy isn't that important right now. Alright, next confusing thing, baptism. Jesus, while he was still on earth, commanded his disciples to baptize people. Now, most Christian denominations believe that baptism is what you do to show that you are a follower of Christ. You do that, and you are saved. And for that reason, they only baptize, you know, older people who know what baptism is, who can understand what's happening. Just to show to the world, you know, I am confessing that I believe in Jesus. I do not believe that it is something that you are doing. I would argue that we should also baptize babies, because I think baptism isn't anything that you are doing, it is what God is doing. It is the Holy Spirit coming into you and planting that seed of faith that will hopefully grow into a tree of faith, which will hopefully grow like little apples of faith that'll be like awesome delicious apples of faith, and not like those weird three-week-old apples, those are gross, but no, like good, like succulent apples, you know. Alright, final statements here. This is my analogy for being saved, alright? By the way, I did not come up with this analogy. I heard it from my pastor. He might not have come up with it. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna credit him with it, so. So if you're watching this, Pastor James, credit. All right, so the analogy is, you're skydiving. You jumped out of a plane, parachute on your back, and you're just falling, right? So it's finally, it's time to pull the cord and have your parachute eject, you know, and you'll slow down. So you pull the cord, but the parachute doesn't come out. It's stuck. So you're falling, right? But luckily, Jesus jumped out of the plane right after you, and he sees that it's not working for you, so he makes a beeline straight for you, right? So Jesus is there, he hooks you on up to him, and he pulls his parachute cord, and you both are safe. So you didn't have to ask Jesus to help you, he tried to help you no matter what. However, you can always push Jesus away and say, no, I don't need you, I can do this on my own. I want to try to do this on my own. So you push Jesus away, and you keep trying, but eventually you splat and hit the earth, you know? I believe that Christianity is the same way. At some point in your life, you will have the opportunity to follow Jesus. So you can push him away and say, that's a bunch of baloney, I don't believe that. Or, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can accept Jesus, and, you know, Jesus will save you, and you'll go to heaven, and all that jazz. Whew. That took a long time to say. This whole video, I mean, not just that analogy. Whew. Alright. 
If you made it through this entire video, good for you. If you're not a Christian and are intrigued by this video, I encourage you to go to your local church, talk to the pastor there, and see how you might become a Christian. Or if you don't want to do that, I encourage you just to open up a Bible and start reading, see what it says. If you are already a Christian, then good for you. Sorry if I disagree with anything you believe. I'm not going to debate or anything, so feel free to comment, you know, you're wrong about this in the comments below. I'm not going to reply to that sort of comment. So, so anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I post videos every Thursday, so you can look forward to that every week. Until next week, have a good time and don't die.